Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's Passion and Resurrection and prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the Gospel, and so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, think on me and purge away my sin. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us, we are sorry and ashamed, and repent of all our sins, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 58, beginning at verse 1. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practised righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your, feet, on your fast day, and oppress all your workers. 
Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight, and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush, and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually, and satisfy your needs in parched places, and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruin shall be rebuilt, and you shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have mercy on us, Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy upon me, O God, in your great love. In your compassion blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. Have mercy on us, Lord, for we have sinned. To you I confess my faults, for they ever stare me in the face. Against you it is that I have sinned, and an evil in your sight. Have mercy on us, Lord, for we have sinned. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not out of your sight, nor take your Holy Spirit from me. Have mercy on us, Lord, for we have sinned. Uphold me with your mind and strengthen me with perseverance. Open my lips, O God, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Have mercy on us, Lord, for we have sinned. The second reading is from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 5, beginning at verse 20. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 
As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labours, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honour and dishonour, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early in the morning Jesus came again to the temple. All the people came to him and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and making her stand before all of them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one among you who is without sin be the first to throw the stone at her. And once again he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders, and Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on do not sin again. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It seems almost superfluous after a year like the one we have just had, and with tough times still ahead, to remind ourselves of our mortality by saying or hearing those words again, Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. 
We certainly don't need reminding of our fragility and how quickly the things, or even the people we love, can be snatched away from us. But Lent is not a time of despair, but a time of hope, wrapped up in a good dose of reality. It is about opportunity, opportunity to grow and to build stronger foundations that might weather more storms, but particularly to help us help others to weather future storms. But there is hope, and so much of it. A fast is just that. It is a limited time before the fast is broken, and then will come the reckoning of whether we fasted with pity for ourselves, or if we fasted with pity for others. Isaiah says that the fast that is for us is not really a fast. It is the fast that gives to others and builds others up, or simply gives to God, which lightens the world. In the same way, St Paul says in his letter to the Corinthians, it's not supposed to be easy. A sacrificial life is a true fast. But sacrificial fasting, giving time and energy, money or love to others, and focusing less on ourselves, does help us to reflect on what is really important and what we should really treasure. It makes us aware of our spiritual hungers and the existential things that we crave. Giving up food gives us a great metaphor for what is possible, uh, what is possible spiritually. We might crave at first, but then we reach a more measured contemplation in which we can reflect on our hungers, what we really miss or what we really need. It has been said that in many countries in the world there are many who have never felt what it is to be full. But in the West it is also true that most have never really felt what it is to be hungry. It is so foreign a feeling that we mistake so many other feelings for hunger, and this is part of the reason for our obesity epidemic. Sadly, there are so many in the world for whom Covid is simply another plague on top of the ones they already face. Ebola, military coup, drugs wars, famine. It certainly comes as a shock to us in our country when we are faced with a crisis like this and death feels very near. Not just because of the illness itself, but because it reveals some of the helplessness of death. When simply being with the dying is the most we can often do, even that has not been possible for many. Unable to grieve in large services with, with a nicer reception afterwards, we find ourselves facing death in a much more solitary way. People have come up with all sorts of things Jesus may have written on the ground, but I think it is left deliberately without clarity. We know that when Jesus touches anything, extraordinary life-giving events occur. His very touch is life. And here we are told he stoops down to the very dust and touches it with his finger. The same dust that is so low and base that even the wretched serpent in the Garden of Eden is condemned to eat nothing but. The dust that man is condemned to return to consumed by the serpent itself. And that might be where it ends. That is certainly the ending the Pharisees envisage for the poor woman who has sinned. They are content to stand in, their, in the safety of their pack, in the safety of their dogmatic and rigid faith. She has sinned, just as Adam did, and must surely be rejected ejected from the assembly and left to the dust. But of course, these men are sinners also, and though they don't realise it, they stand in the face of God, who is judge of all. Now if you remember, it is twice Jesus stoops down to touch the dust. Perhaps the first time was to mark the sin of the woman, and perhaps the second was to mark the sin of the men standing ready to commit murder. The men, perhaps realising their fault, have shied away from condemnation, at least for now. In any case, they kept their safe distance, a stone's throw away, just like the priest in the Good Samaritan who dared not touch the unclean and blooded victim. But Jesus is clear. 
he will not condemn, and indeed his action says it all. He will stoop down and touch the very dust of which we are made, are born and die. He blesses that dust and reveals that even when we make the grave our bed, he is there also. Let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. God the Father, have mercy upon us. God the Son, have mercy upon us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. Holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, have mercy upon us. From all evil and mischief, from pride, vanity, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all evil intent, good Lord, deliver us. From sloth, worldliness and love of money, from hardness of heart and contempt for your word and your laws, good Lord, deliver us. From sins of body and mind, from the deceits of the world, the flesh and the devil, good Lord, deliver us. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of death, and at the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood, and obedience, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, good Lord, deliver us. By your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power, and by your preaching of the kingdom, good Lord, deliver us. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, and by your precious death and burial, good Lord, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit, good Lord, deliver us. Give us true repentance, forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance, and our deliberate sins, and grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your Holy Word. Holy God, holy, strong, Holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Now, if you haven't already, uh, hopefully you may have picked up uh, some ash from uh, the porch of the vicarage. But either way, if you would like to Make the sign of the cross on your own head as I say these words. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. Amen. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. If you're with anyone else, please offer them a sign of peace. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Yeah.